Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be exploring the Cassini mission and basically go through the whole history of the mission, talk about the important findings and use NASA's eyes to discover everything that this mission discovered. Anyway, welcome to What The Man. <laughs> So let's actually talk about Cassini Huygens mission in a little bit more detail and I call it Cassini, Cassini Huygens mostly because there's actually two parts or there were two parts to this mission. One was the orbiter which is that thing right here and the other one was the lander that ended up landing on the Titan and taking an incredible footage, the first basically footage of um, of such object um, in our database and essentially we were landing on an incredible moon of um, Saturn. And you can actually find out more about this particular mission and also watch the footage in one of the videos I made previously by clicking on the link you see um, on your screen right now. But anyway, let's actually talk about this mission in more detail. Um, and um, we're going to be talking about the whole history, starting from the launch, which, um, which actually happened um, 20 years ago from when I'm making this video back in 1997. And so let's start with the launch. The Earth is going to render and here we go, the launch of Cassini from Earth. Cassini left Earth back in uh, 1997 in October and this was a, a normal launch of a normal sort of a, a satellite, a normal orbiter. And uh, the idea here was to launch it from Earth in the direction of Venus. And um, we're, we're going to actually do a few Venus flybys for the next few years. So this wasn't a direct mission to Saturn. And this is usually done to save on fuel and basically be able to bring more stuff on your actual satellite. Um, so because the satellite was really, really big, really, really heavy, um, it, it essentially launched from Earth and used uh, several uh, passes of Venus and one pass of Earth to get what's uh, known as a slingshot maneuver or to do what's known as a slingshot maneuver by basically doing this. So as you fly past the planet that's already moving, you'll actually get a little bit of velocity from that planet as well. So this is exactly what a Cassini mission is going to do. It's going to uh, fly very, very close to Venus that you see right here. And this happened uh, in April of um, the next year, April of 98. And as it flies next to Venus, it's going to basically get some velocity and then uh, do this again uh, the year after. And um, the final slingshot maneuver was uh, next to Earth, and this basically launched it toward Jupiter, where it got yet another slingshot maneuver. So these are relatively complex maneuvers, but uh, we've done so many of them that we actually have achieved expertise in these maneuvers, meaning that you can actually launch an object toward a planet and then use these sling slingshot maneuvers by expanding just a little bit of fuel and then getting quite a large amount of velocity that way. So here was uh, a 1999 slingshot maneuver uh, from Earth. This gave a Cassini mission yet uh, even more velocity. And now it basically is ready to, uh, to be launched um, past Mars into the area of, um, here we go, and look at how close it passed, um, to the area next to Jupiter where it's going to be going next. And so when it approached Jupiter, it actually was able to take some incredible photos of Jupiter, the first such photos we've ever seen. Um, and uh, it actually was able to even do a lot of science around the system. So Cassini mission didn't just study Saturn, it also studied Jupiter quite a lot. And uh, this was just on the flyby um, sort of a trajectory. And uh, it took a lot of photos, it took a lot of uh, data and was able to even take a, a few photos of its satellites as well. And uh, this was actually a quite an incredible opportunity for us to see some of the things um, on Jupiter we have never seen before. And this occurred um, back in January of 2001. So you can see it's passing by Jupiter, getting extra velocity from Jupiter, and then proceeded to its final destination, uh, Saturn, uh, when uh, in 2004, basically seven years after it left Earth, it is going to initiate what's known as the insertion maneuver, so here you get to actually see what, what happened, is going to reposition itself, pointing away from its velocity vector, and it's going to slow down and place itself in orbit around Jupiter. So it's a very complex, very dangerous, yet really, really cool maneuver. And if you've ever played Kerbal Space Program, you may, you may know how difficult it can be to actually uh, reach this particular area or how difficult it is to be so accurate about approaching this particular area. And so now we are in orbit around Saturn. And this uh, is going to be our orbit for the next 
uh, 13 years. We're going to be staying here for 13 years doing a lot of exploration and data. And because this particular probe uh, had something like 2000 uh, meters per second of delta V, it meant that it can actually, or it could actually navigate and maneuver itself as it needed uh, by changing tra trajectories just a little bit and approaching various uh, moons and various areas around Saturn quite easily. So this probe actually brought quite a lot of fuel with it, which is why the mission was so heavy to begin with. And uh, on top of that, Cassini actually, let me just zoom into it so I can show it to you. Cassini also um, had uh, a really interesting plutonium um, battery uh, inside. So you can kind of see it's right here. This is how it produces energy. So it doesn't actually have any solar um, panels because it didn't need them. It had the plutonium based uh, battery that produces quite a lot of energy and would actually last for many, many decades. So in terms of energy, it was, it was just fine. There's actually two of them. Oh, and one thing I actually forgot to mention and that wasn't shown in the simulation is that on the way to Saturn, it um, passed uh, through the asteroid belt and it actually passed by an asteroid and was able to take some um, really nice footage and pictures of it as well. And when I actually say close, I mean like 1.6 kilometers away, so it's still pretty far. And this is actually the picture of that asteroid that it was able to shoot from that distance. So that was a pretty cool opportunity for us to actually snap a shot of an asteroid and even study it a little bit as well. And this asteroid was known as uh, 2685 Mazorsky. Uh, and you can actually find out more about this asteroid on, on, uh, on Wikipedia or just by going to any of these links in Wikipedia. So if you actually want to know what we learn about it, go and check it out. But long story short, not a lot. We, we didn't have enough time to study it. Now, the next uh, important event is right here. This is the Huygens separation. And Huygens is actually this little umbrella thing here that just sort of separated. And it's going to go and land on Titan. It has um, its own battery, chemical battery that it's going to be using, and it has its own camera. And it's going to be snapping shots and sending them to Cassini that will relay them to Earth. Now, the Huygens probe um, is probably one of the coolest things that happened in human space exploration in the last decade or so, because it was able to shoot an actual video um, and the sound of, uh, you know, the landing to Titan and it was able to keep shooting pictures until its battery ran out of juice basically. So this was actually one of the coolest uh, missions I think because Titan is a really awesome object and we, uh, through this mission we were able to discover that uh, you know Titan has very thick atmosphere, it has a liquid cycle on its surface, it has methane and ethane oceans and a lot of other awesome stuff as well. And so here goes uh, Huygens probe and it's going to be basically landing on Titan any second now and this is happening on january 14 of 2005 so for me that, that was only about uh, 12 years ago and boom done so it landed took some photos sent them to cassini and we relayed them back to earth now a few other events that occurred here that are not actually mentioned in this particular simulation is that we also discovered quite a lot of new moons and new satellites around saturn now uh, the first one was actually discovered back in 2004 and i don't know if we can actually see it here but we can see it in universe sandbox so this moon right here known as uh methony i believe that's how you pronounce it don't take my word for it um it's a greek character that i'm not familiar with uh this was actually one of the first discovered back in 2004 we also discovered these two on the same date or very close to the, that date of 2004 so Pauline and polydeuces as well and uh, these were the first three satellites that were uncovered using the new probe. Then in 2005, we also discovered this one right here, uh, right next to the inner ring. Uh, this one was called Daphne. Uh, then in 2007, we found this one called Anthe. And finally, or actually not finally, the sixth one was uh, in 2009, this right here, this was uh, Aegean. So all of them are kind of very close to each other. And the last one still has no name or just uh, basically has only a numerical designation. And also, unfortunately, I think it's not really represented in the Universe Sandbox because I can't seem to find it. But if it is there, I just couldn't find it. It's um, definitely a smaller uh, moon that is a lot less important than these other moons I just uh, mentioned. But anyway, so let's go back to NASA's ice and we're going to be um, talking about one of the more important uh, discoveries here. So of course we discovered the lakes on Titan using uh, Cassini and uh, most importantly is we actually discovered something on Enceladus and you're going to see it in a few seconds. We discovered that Enceladus, um, a much, much smaller um, moon of Saturn, it's about uh, 
under 400 kilometers in radius, um, seems to have uh, these really beautiful geysers, these eruptions of water and uh, water ice from its surface that you're going to see when I zoom into it. Um, and uh, what we found out about it is that, um, well, very recently actually, is that uh, this particular moon may actually have necessary conditions for life on the inside. So let me just slow this down for a second. And we're going to go to Enceladus and take a look at its bottom. So these right here were discovered um, a few years ago, but specifically now we actually know that there's a lot of really cool stuff coming out of them, including molecular hydrogen that is often needed on Earth to power quite a lot of life. So inside of this is uh, something known as hydrothermal events. These really, really hot uh, geyser-like environments create conditions for life. So we think that this might be actually currently the best place for us to find life outside of planet Earth. And because of this, uh, we don't want to contaminate this. We don't want to contaminate this or Titan. So this is why we decided that the finale of this mission, when uh, it occurs in September of 2017, is actually going to be a big crash into Saturn, while um, we're actually going to be transmitting various data coming from uh, both Saturn rings and Saturn upper atmosphere. So all of this will happen in September 2017, um, and it will basically be a really cool mission to observe and to follow because, um, well, first we're doing this so that we don't actually contaminate those objects, and we, if we do find life, it's going to be a life from those objects, not a life from Earth that possibly is currently taking a ride on Cassini. And two is that we actually want to learn more about uh, the atmosphere of Saturn, so this will allow us to, to do all of this. And um, once again, we're doing this because we're technically running out of fuel on Cassini, so it's going to be doing these uh, proximal orbits that are going to be kind of like flying like this around Saturn and taking quite a lot of photos at the same time, a lot of observational data. And uh, this will happen something like 34 times, I believe, and then final transmission will occur as it essentially falls toward uh, Saturn. And um, this is actually uh, speed of light in real, real time as it approaches Earth. And it takes about an hour to reach Earth, as a matter of fact. And so by the time that Cassini probe crashes onto Saturn, an hour later, we'll be able to finally get the data and the pictures and all, all of that stuff that um, basically arrives to Earth an hour after Cassini crashes into Saturn. And so that's basically the history and the essence of this mission. And if you want to know more about this, do check out NASA Zeitz. It's a free app that you can uh, use to, uh, for example, go through various awesome photos. Like one of the most incredible photos of Saturn was actually taken. Also, yeah, this is the uh, this is what we found on Enceladus. But one of the most incredible photos is this: the day uh, the uh, Earth smiled. So this is actually what it kind of looks like. This is a photo that was taken with sun sort of behind Saturn and it illuminated uh, Saturn's rings in this very beautiful formation. And so all of these are available for you to explore, including the storm that we found on Saturn uh, back in, I believe this was uh, 2010, and a lot of other really cool features. So there's a lot of information here uh, on in this app, but I kind of decided to just mention the important facts and important features. And if you want to uh, find out more, we're going to make another video in September of 2017 uh, when we're going to be talking about uh, the actual finale and the findings as well. And uh, this is the Death Star Mimus. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and who wants to learn more about space through video games. And uh, come back tomorrow to learn something else about space, sciences, math, or maybe we'll just play a video game. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. This is Enceladus in false color. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.